Did you hear the exciting news that V2G is actually coming and hopefully by the end of this year, some of you might actually have it in your home. I previously did a video about V2G and if it would ever actually come. And in there I shared a lot of the technicalities of why it was difficult and why we hadn't seen it yet. But recently there was a big announcement from these dudes, uh, you know, some random Greg guy and uh, Damon Hill. Don't know if you ever heard of him, Quentin Wilson. Anyway, um, without being uh, facetious and failing at terrible humor and comedy, I want to run you through some of the details that came out of this announcement. So you've probably seen already the headlines, Octopus have teamed up with BYD to offer a package deal. They're calling it the Power Pack. You lease a BYD Dolphin, you get a charger, and you get their V2G um, service with Octopus, all for under £300, or I should say priced from £300 per month. We'll see uh, how that actually pans out, or if this turns into a kind of cosy six thing, which initially came out of the gate swinging really cheap, undercutting everyone, and the price has been creeping up quite considerably on that. Anyway, I've got to stay focused on this video. Um, V2G, basically, if you're not aware, go and watch some other videos, but it allows us to bring energy into a vehicle battery when it's cheap and then discharge that energy from the battery when the grid is dirtier and more expensive. We can use that in our home or we can use it to supplement the grid and export that energy back to the grid. So there's lots of advantages, of course. Um, some people have been looking at this for financial reasons. Um, there's uh, some detail on here about whether uh, you might be eligible for this uh, or not in lots of cases actually when we start uh, drilling into the details. This is the charge point that they are planning to use. Um, there is some more details here about the Zeptec, Zaptec Pro charger. Um, it's been around for a bit. It's not a brand new charger. You can actually buy them from the wholesalers um, and uh, they seem to be a very competent charger but nothing special. They are just a normal charge point. The car actually does the V2G part. Okay, so in here, this is the T's and C's document. You can go and find this. I might put the link in the uh, description of the video so you can go and check this out yourself. And I'll walk you through some of the T's and C's and where some of this fits. But if you're looking just price-wise, you can already get a Dolphin uh, and perfect. I've got that out of shot. 200, there you go, 252 two pounds per month on 12,000 miles with a three-year uh, three term with a 12-month initial deposit and of course the cost of the charger you can see there is 786 pounds not including any installation. So what are the things you need to consider um, if you are keen on um, applying for this little package? So first of all there is a max mileage on it of 12,000 miles so this little uh, power pack from Octopus is not suitable for big drivers, uh, high mileage drivers, and uh, doing a lot of distance. Basically, um, they assume that you will be averaging three miles per kilowatt hour, which I'd hope I'd hope that the uh, BYD Dolphin will be doing considerably more than that. Is a small light car should be very efficient. Um, so effectively, you're guaranteed to get 4,000 kilowatt hours free as part of this power pack. It's not really free. You're paying 300 pounds a month for it. Um, after you go over that limit, then you will be charged at the Intelligent Octopus Go rate, which currently is 7p. That could change at any time. Um, the needs to be plugged in for at least 20 days every month for at least 12 hours every day. So quite a considerable portion. Um, you know, it's fine if you plug it in at six o'clock at night and it stays plugged in until six o'clock in the morning absolutely fine you're gonna have no worries and 20 days a month that's basically every working day every working evening you plug it in and leave it but that might be a high bar for some people um it's only available for people who don't currently export from solar or batteries so straight away that rules me out 
Um, in this video, I'm not going to go into the technical reasons of why that is a challenge and why that's still a problem. You can go back and watch my previous video about V2G. It goes into some some of the principles, not the actual nitty gritty details, but the principles of why that's difficult and why I expect that to continue for the kind of foreseeable future because it doesn't look like the regulation is in place really to help us. <clears throat> Any other EV charger that you have on the premises will have to be removed. Um, and that may just be that you temporarily remove your Zappi, your Wallbox, your Hypervolt, and you store it in your garage for the three years of the lease, and then maybe you reinstate it at the end of the lease, or however you feel at the end of the lease. Um, Octopus earns and makes the money from the energy arbitrage that is going on there, <clears throat> the energy trading. So bringing the, money, the energy in at a cheap rate and exporting it at an expensive rate, you don't financially benefit from that. That's Octopus that will be making the profit from that. So what we don't actually see is whether we will be able to reap the full benefit as homeowners of the 40 or so kilowatt hour battery that's going to be set on our drives to power our homes throughout a day. There's not a lot of uh, information about that and how you can actually use that in the home. Uh, you need to pass a G99 approval for 5 kilowatt or over export limit. So you need to have a reasonable connection and the, yeah, basically your grid operator, local grid operator needs to approve that you've got big enough cables and transformers and blah, blah, blah to uh, sustain that and that there's not too many people also on your connection exporting from solar and battery and stuff. So um, now I want to really ask the question, um, who is this for? Who does this suit? Okay, so we know it's not people doing high mileage. We know it's not people that are, are already exporting from solar and battery. We know it has to be people that can have it plugged in for quite a long time. Um, it If you do some rough sums on the cost of a lease of one of these and, and the charge point... Um, it doesn't look like it's um, a brilliant financial proposition. Perhaps there are some niche cases where this would be really beneficial. Um, perhaps if you're a really high home energy user and you can benefit from having a giant home storage battery sat on your driveway, if you work from home, no problem at all. So you don't have to worry about... Uh, a lot of miles you can have it plugged in for a lot of time maybe you're retired and also uh, leave it plugged in while you're um, down at the allotment I don't know tell me what you do uh, there's a lot of great retired viewers watching let me know what you do and if you could get the car plugged in for a long time I should stop waffling I should just say this is still quite niche and this has a very small window of a kind of suitable use cases of course there's also you need to pass the g99 approval um the other thing that i wanted to throw out there maybe uh heat pump users if you don't have solar or battery which is a, a pretty small pool of people pretty much everyone who's got a heat pump has solar or battery um perhaps that could be really great because you'd have a giant home storage battery you could run it really really cheaply um, perhaps this isn't your primary vehicle perhaps this is just a second car and perhaps that could work out okay for you um, I'm not sure the uh, previously in the video where I spoke about regulation I uh, showed that the difficult uh, situation is that these need to be kind of um, they need to be kind of regulated at the moment as a pairing, a charger and a vehicle together. And so every time you change vehicle, you're going to have to change charger until they properly work out the standards and the protocols. But I guess the only thing that I did get right is that uh, this is an AC V2G system. So the car is doing the conversion. The car has a DC battery pack. 
it converts it to AC, it pumps the AC through the charge point into your home so you don't have a massive bulky wall box and a charge point on the side of your house that is kind of like a reverse solar inverter converting from DC into AC. But um, anyway, that's enough waffle from me. <clears throat> what do you think? Are you happy like me that this is just this just means that Octopus is forcing the industry forward? It's just sheer strength and scale to push things forward and that this will push other manufacturers to actually pair up and provide something? Or will this become kind of like the Renault 5 promise that they promised V2G and it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming? Will Octopus just keep kicking that, kicking it down the can because it's so technically difficult? I really hope not. I really hope this is the beginning, just the the thin edge, the thin edge of the wedge, um, thin end of the wedge. That's what I should be saying. That really hopes, really opens the floodgates for V2G to be rolled out. Anyway, I've waffled on too long, and that's all from me today. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I learned a lot from your comments that you. You uh, shared with me in the last V2G video. Oh, I'm so tongue tied today. That's all. Goodbye.